Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. It is Saturday, Saturday the 9th of September. And so let's pray as we start this new day afresh that God, in his mercy, has granted to us. Uh, another warm, another warm day in London. So we thank God for that. And... Uh, Pray that God will help all those who are finding it difficult, unbearable in the heat. That God will grant grace in this, in this time. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let's go to our psalm. So the psalm this morning is uh, Psalm 147. Psalm 147. The first the collect. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Alleluia. How good it is to make music for our God. How joyful. To honor him with praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. He gives the beasts their food, the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength. But the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. Compassionate God. As you know each star you have created, 
in your loving mercy, bring to your table all who are fearful and broken, all who are wounded and needy, that our hungers may be satisfied in the city of your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's... Uh, Let's do uh, the Benedictus, Song of Zechariah. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. All right, let's go to our first reading this morning which is uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 3. Well, Zechariah chapter 3, all of chapter 3. <clears throat> then the angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser, Satan, was there at the angel's right hand, making accusations against Joshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusation, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. Joshua's clothing was filthy as he stood there before the angel. So the angel said to the others standing there, Take off his filthy clothes. And turning to Joshua, he said, See, I have taken away your sins. And now I am giving you these fine clothes. Then I said, they should also place a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean priestly turban on his head and dressed him in new clothes while the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord spoke very solemnly to Joshua and said, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. If you follow my ways and carefully serve me, then you will be given authority over my temple and its courtyards. I will let you walk among these others standing here. Listen to me, O Joshua, the son of the high priest, and all you other priests. You are symbols of things to come. Soon I am going to bring my servant the branch. 
Now look at the jewel I have set before Joshua. A single stone with seven faucets. I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. And I will remove the sins of this land in a single day. And on that day, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, each of you will invite your neighbor to sit with you peacefully under your own grapevine and fig tree. Amen. This is God's word. It's a great sim sim symbol. It's a great symbol. Um, this Joshua, the, the high priest in filthy clothes, the priest who is in dirty clothes. And so, so, so Zechariah sees this vision of Joshua, the high priest, standing before God. And you have the devil on one side accusing him, accusing the uh, and this is a word. That is the that is the, the 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 situation all the time with all of God's people. The devil, Satan, the accuser, is always there, accusing us before God. He is the act. Is 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 the prosecuting attorney. He is he's always finding something to show of our nakedness, of our wretchedness, of our dirtiness. But God. God, the Lord, the, the Lord says, take off the dirty clothes off. And so the angels strip the high priest of his dirty clothes and gave him new clothes and a new turban, which represents his priestly authority. And so there, the, despite the accusations of Satan, God is the one who is going to clothe us in new clothes. He clothes us in righteousness, we are told. That is what this symbol is. This is what this picture is. It's a picture of God clothing his people in righteousness. And then he says, he's going to, I'm going to bring my servant the branch. And of course, that is Jesus. The branch is the Messiah, the one who is to come. He is the one who is going to eradicate the sins from the people in one day. In one day, in a single day, I will remove the sins of this land, he says. The branch is the one who is going to do this, the one who is coming. He is the great high priest, of course. But he is the one who is going to clothe all of God's people. Take away the dirty clothes and give us clean clothes. He's going to clothe us in righteousness. That is the, the picture we have here of God taking away the filthy rags that we wear and clothing us in his righteousness, in purity. We cannot do this on ourselves, sisters and brothers. We are unable to clean ourselves. Joshua didn't realize that he was wearing dirty clothes. You see, and that's the other bit. In our eyes, we think that we are we are righteous. In our eyes, we think that we we you know our our, our righteousness are pure. But as Isaiah says, our, all our righteousness are our filthy rags, our dirty cloth. And so here, in the presence of God, Joshua sees himself for who he really is: someone who wears dirty clothes. Someone whose priestly garment is soiled. Uh, and, and of course, that defiles him as a priest before God. But God says, I will take off the dirty clothes. And I will give you clean clothes. And that, that is the righteousness of God for us. All of us are wearing dirty clothes. All of us are sinful. All of us, are, all of our righteous deeds are dirty rags. But God is in God in Jesus Christ is going to uh, strip us of the of the filth and clothe us in His precious righteous garment. All right, let's let's see that there. But um, because there are lots of symbolism in in Joshua I and mean, in in Joshua, in Zechariah, and we're going to look at some more of them.
And all, most or all of these symbolisms relate to Jesus and the church, the people of God. Joshua is a symbol of the people of God, the priestly people of God. We are the priestly people of God. Uh, all of us are a nation of priests. And Joshua represents us. And our dirt, the dirty clothes represents our sins and our evil, the wickedness of our hearts. And the cleansing of, our, of the dirt, the changing of the dirty clothes is God taking away the wickedness, the sinfulness of our hearts and giving us new clothes. Mark chapter, Mark chapter 9 is our next reading. From verse 30 to 37. Mark chapter 9. So leaving that region, they traveled through Galilee. Jesus didn't want anyone to know he was there, for he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later he will rise from the dead. They didn't understand what he was saying, however, and they were afraid to ask him what he meant. After they arrived at Capernaum and settled in a house, Jesus asked his disciples, What were you discussing out on the road? They didn't answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. <laughs> he sat them down called the twelve disciples over to him and said, Whoever wants to be first must take pl last place and be the servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also my Father who sent me. Amen. All right, so two points here. Firstly, first, it's more like three, but two. Firstly, the Jesus teaching about um, his impending death. You know, now the, the, he's, he's on the road to Jerusalem to, and, and his death, is getting closer and, he, and and it's as if it's as if Jesus can feel the pressure coming closer so he's seeking to prepare his disciples for what is coming the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies he will be killed and three days he will rise from the dead it's very plain but of course they have no way of understanding what he's saying they have no paradigm as far as they're concerned, he might be speaking in parables. Again, um, they are not sure if this is literally what he's saying. Is he literally saying he's going to die and come back to life after three days? Or, or is this some sort of parable? I mean, they, they believed in an afterlife and they believed in a resurrection life. So they, Jesus might be saying, oh, you know, I'm going to come back to life one day. Yes, of course you're going to come back to life one day. We all are by, you know, we all are going to come back to life one day. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't get it. <laughs> after three days, I'm going to die, and after three days, I'll come back to life. Really? Okay. All right. And, and, and it doesn't sink in. So Mark said they didn't understand what he was saying, but they didn't dare ask him any more questions because they were afraid to ask him, what is it that you are saying? I mean, they were, they're afraid to ask him, primarily, because they've been with him for three years, some three and a half years, maybe. And, and he's teaching them about this stuff in different ways. And so by now, they should be able to understand. But they, they, they don't. And so 
they don't want to uh, they want they don't want to show their ignorance you see this is uh, i mean this is human nature isn't it? it's it's that uh, you should know something but you don't and you don't want to show that you don't know so you don't you don't ask you just keep quiet you're like okay I'm not gonna ask i'll figure it out eventually and that's what that's what they they did they leave it but anyway on the way they were arguing about something else. Who is going to be the greatest? Who is the greatest? In, in a, who? Which one of the disciples is great? And Jesus, Jesus knew what they were asking, but what they were arguing about. But he called them and he said, "What were you arguing about?" They said, "We were trying to figure out which one of us is greater, which one of us is the chief, which one of us is is superior." And Jesus said, in the kingdom of God, the first place goes to the person at the bottom. This is a, it's, it's a different kingdom from any other kingdom in the world. The kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, those who are first are those who are at the bottom. Those who are serving, those who are on their knees, those who are cleaning the floor. Those are the first. It's not the people who sit on the thrones. It's not those who sit up uh, in, in, in high official buildings. No, no, no. Those are not the first. Those who take first place in the kingdom of God are those who are servant of everyone else. And that's why Jesus, uh, Jesus is the greatest example of leadership, what we call servant leadership. Because he, he's teaching us that the one who is in the kingdom of God. This is the key. In the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is radically different from any other kingdom on earth. In the kingdom of God, those who are, who serve, those who are at the bottom in service and looking after the poor and the needy and the sick and so forth, those are the people who have first place in the kingdom. It's, it's, it's those people who occupy the the, 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 the the chief positions in the kingdom, not the other way around. And so he he took, you know, he, he took a basin and he got down on his knees and washed the dirty feet of his disciples. And he's teaching us that that is what it means to be great in the kingdom, is to be able to get down on your knees and wash dirty feet. Look after the care for the, the, the sick and the vulnerable and, 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 and so on. That is what it means to be great in the kingdom of God. And so he's saying, if you want to if you wanna know which of you is the greatest, which of you serve the most, which of you are more willing to get down on your knees and serve and serve those on the, on the, on the ground, those, uh, those, those no one else care about. Those no one else want to look after. Yeah, that, he says, is how you determine who is great in the kingdom of God. So he took a little child. And he used that child, the uh, most vulnerable of, of people. Uh, most helpless of hum human beings. A child. Most vulnerable, most helpless and he says, unless you are like this little child. Uh, and in this case, he said, unless you welcome this little child in my name, you, 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 you don't have any part in the kingdom. He says, anyone who welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. Anyone who welcomes me welcomes my father. In other words, the little child is a representative of me. Those helpless, those most vulnerable in our society, they represent me. That's why Mother Teresa was able to say she sees Christ, Jesus, in every helpless child. So when she helps a helpless child, she's, she's helping Christ. Because unless we see Jesus in the most vulnerable, the most, the weakest, the, 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 the the most, uh, the, the little children in our society, we don't, we are not ready for the kingdom, says Jesus. This is something I think the church has lost. 
significant than us because we have grown to be to 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 enjoy power and 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 political power and clout and, and all of that stuff and privilege in our society that we forget that is the one who welcomes the child the vulnerable the weak in our society you know in, in in the kingdom of god that is great those who serve are the ones who are great not the ones who sit at the table as jesus says in another parable let's let's pray our father and god we thank you for uh, bringing us to the, this new day and uh, entering into this weekend. So Lord, we as we as we reflect on these two readings this morning, Joshua, the high priest, the dirty high priest, who is clothed with your righteousness. Lord, we reflect on our own hearts and we realize, Lord, that we in ourselves we are not clean. In our in ourselves. Sometimes we look at our own selves and we think we are clean. But when you look at us, you see the dirt. You see the uncleanness of our hearts. And so, Lord, we pray. We ask that you will clothe us in the righteousness of Christ. So that we are made clean by your garment. By your righteousness, O oh God. And so that we are made holy. Not by the things we do, not in our own strength, but but in your in your power and so clothe us in your righteousness O lord so that we will reflect your your life in our life that we will reflect your your holiness in in our day-to-day -day lives and the conversations and so lord we we come as we we come seeking to be great in your kingdom Help us to serve. Help us to care for the vulnerable, the weak, the outcasts, the child. Lord, give us grace to welcome those who are the most vulnerable in our society, in our world, and to care for them as your people, as a church, as your church upon, uh, in this world, so that we will reflect reflect your values in the in the 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 the, the, the in the world in which we live in, in in the communities in which we live so lord help us we pray to have this servant heart to seek to serve more than anything else in your kingdom lord to to be willing to serve and not count the cost Lord, we pray so that we can, we know that serving you is of, is, brings great reward. And yet, so many of us are not willing to serve. Lord, your church consists of so many people who have not yet got down on their knees to serve the vulnerable and the outcast, taken the basin and the towel to wash the feet of those who are dirty, those who are vulnerable, those who are weak. So Lord, uh, empower your church, inspire your people to care for the, for, for the weak among us, for the sick, for the aged, uh, for the suffering, for the dying, for the children. So Lord, give us a spirit of servanthood, uh, and the, uh, the attitude to serve, uh, because in service in your kingdom is where we receive our reward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord. For your church, for your people scattered everywhere in the world, throughout the whole world, we pray, we pray for your church. Those who are 
living in hostile community where, where the sharing or the public demonstration of their faith can be, can be dangerous. We pray for those secret believers, those who must, as it were, hide their faith from their neighbors, from even their families, because their lives would be in danger if they dare to publicly confess you. We pray for them. We pray that you'll give them strength in their time of need. Lord, be with your people wherever they may be across this world, in their families, in their communities, in their, in their tribe, in their countries. Lord, empower your church. Clothe your people in your righteousness, O oh God. Remove the filthy rags. Remove the filthy garment from your people's hearts and clothe them in your righteousness and empower them to be servant, to serve in your kingdom. And so, Lord, strengthen your church. Give us grace to be the witnesses that you have called us to be, the salt, the light, so that we can shine with your light and we will uh, season this world uh, a world that is rotten, a world that is the values that are, 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 are the values of this world are, are, are antithetical to your values. May we be the salt to bring seasoning, to bring, to bring, pres to preserve your values in this world. And so Lord, be with your people today. As we enter into the weekend and, and uh, the Lord's Day tomorrow when we will gather throughout the world to worship and to praise and to fellowship, to praise your name and to fellowship with one another. Be in our midst, we pray, by your Holy Spirit. And bring healing to your people as we gather. Heal those who are sick in mind and body and strengthen our faith as we sharpen each other's faith together when we meet in your name as so the lord empower your empower your church through worship through praise ordain strength so that we will be stronger together as your people when we gather and scatter into the world and so, Lord, be with us tomorrow as your church gathered, not just here, but everywhere, gathered on your day, on the Lord's day, on your holy day that you have ordained for us to gather. And so, Lord, strengthen us as your people to face the challenges of the world, the flesh and the devil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for our world and we pray for peace in our world. We pray, Lord, <coughs> for the salvation of this world. We ask, O oh God, that you will pour out your spirit upon this world. And Lord, you love the world. And yet, so many in the world do not love you. And so we pray, Lord, for this world. Where there is hatred, bring love. Where there is discord, where there is war, where there is violence, bring peace and harmony. Where there is despair, bring hope. And so, Lord, heal this world. The divisions, the hate, the violence, bring healing in this world, we pray. And change the hearts of those who seek violence. Those who seek to perpetrate violence. Those who perpetrate hate. Lord, change their hearts. And convert, change the, 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 this world. Lord, transform this world. Into your kingdom, we pray. And so, Lord, we pray for Ukraine and Sudan and 
And wherever there is conflict in our world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for, we pray for those who are sick. We ask, Lord, that you will bring healing to those who are sick today, those who are suffering in mind or body. Remember those who we, we are praying for in our own community, those in our family, those in our church family. Lord, ease pain, bring healing to those who are suffering from cancer and strengthen, oh God, those who are sick and weak, the aged, the infirm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, Lord, that we who are baptized into the death of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection through his merits who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and give you his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.